Hi everybody. Welcome back. I'm going to try something a little bit different in this video. I'm going to try doing uh, one of these overdub things <laughs> where I put the images up on the screen and talk at the computer here on my microphone. So we'll see how this goes. I've never done anything like this before, but we'll try it out. As you can tell by the image up here, we're going to do a little video on turntable alignment alignment terminology and I thought that might be useful because I always get a lot of questions about what some of these terms mean and what, what they actually are in reality so if that sounds interesting to you stay tuned that's what we're going to do so as you can see up here on the screen uh, we're going to employ the use of my Pioneer PLX 1000 turntable I really like this turntable because it's very high quality. It's very similar to some of the really popular Technics models like the SL1200 and so forth. And I like that it has a variable arm height so you can set the vertical tracking angle and, rate, and or rake angle. We'll talk about what some of these things mean. And you can see I have an alignment template on the platter right now and I have uh, the arm sitting on the platter kind of in a manner as if we were going to begin to do an alignment. So without any further ado, let's uh, talk about what some of these things mean. Okay, the first part we're looking at here is the head shell. And its purpose in life is to hold the cartridge and the stylus. Turning the head shell around, you can see the cartridge right here. And this is the part that actually makes the sound. It takes the sound off of the stylus, which is the needle, and it converts it into a little electrical signal. And that electrical signal can be amplified by your stereo. Now attached to the end of the cartridge, we have the stylus. The stylus is sometimes called the needle because in the old days it resembled a needle uh, on the old phonographs, the old Edison phonographs and so forth. And it's, it actually goes up inside the cartridge. And there, in this particular cartridge, this is called a moving magnet cartridge. And what there is is there's a small magnet attached to that arm where the little tiny stylus tip is. And we'll look at a close-up view of the stylus tips here. And you can, it actually moves that magnet inside of a coil of wire and it creates an electromagnetic field. And that little field creates a current that comes out, those, out of those four wires there. And the reason there's four wires is there's two wires for the left channel and two wires for the right channel. This is a stereo cartridge. In a mono cartridge or a one channel cartridge, you would only have two wires coming out. And Essentially, by the, this particular stylus moving side to side, it will, it will either excite a current on the two wires on the right side or the two wires on the left side uh, of the cartridge for your stereo sound. Now, there are different types of stylus tips, and you can see from this little chart, from audio, thanks to Audio-Technica, you can see some of the more common ones that are out there. And each one, uh, going from left to right, gets a little more uh, detailed in its design. And you can see the profile of how they will actually track in that record groove that we just saw the picture of earlier. And as you get more complex in the cut of the diamond, of this stylus tip, <laughs> of course the cost goes up uh, substantially. So some of these styluses can be very expensive in the many hundreds of dollars or even more. But uh, the whole purpose of each of these is to f follow all of those little tiny uh, movements of the groove of the record to reproduce the sound. Because really what a cartridge does is it takes mechanical energy and converts it into electrical energy. So looking at the diagram here you can see how the stylus uh, moves inside the grooves of the record and it moves the cantilever arm which moves the magnet uh, you know pivoting on the little suspension in there and that movement of the magnet inside the coil 
just kind of like a string on it on an electric guitar pickup uh, will produce the sound and then you'll have that little tiny signal and it's very small very low output coming out of that coil through the terminal pins and that's what goes through your preamp that's how it works generally going back to our close-up image of the needle in the groove there like that the stylus you can see how important then it would be for that stylus to be totally perpendicular to the groove like it is right in the picture uh, if it goes if it's tilted to one side or to the other you could see how it would not track within those grooves because on one side of the groove is your left channel information and on the other side is your right channel so depending on which direction the cantilever is going to move back and forth it's going to affect your stereo separation and the output of the signal so that's why all that we're going to be doing in this alignment is you're going to try to get that stylus aligned just like you see in there get it as straight in the groove as you can so adjusting the stylus to be perpendicular to the groove like our last picture is called azimuth adjust and what you're looking at right here is an azimuth adjustment tool so this is just an acrylic block with some lines on it looking up close you can see how you can kind of sight it like this and you can look at the stylus and you can look at the cartridge and everything with respect to this little block gauge and this is what's going to help you to align it now if you had to make this alignment you would either have to rotate the head shell with with respect to the tone arm or you'd have to put some shims under those sets over those mounting screws of the cartridge to get it to line up normally this is something that's pre, pretty much pre-aligned at the factory unless there's a real problem it should be pretty good and you normally don't have to mess with it very much looking at the rear of the tone arm you have the yoke assembly which which holds the bearings that the tone arm pivots on and that center part that center bearing we call the pivot and that's very a very important part in measuring the distance from the pivot to the stylus which is going to be your arm length and that's very important to know the other things that are on the the back of the tone arm are the the counterweight assembly which is for vertical tracking pressure and that's how you set your tracking force and that's how you set how much weight the uh, stylus applies to the record and there's a little force gauge that you use for that you can buy them and measure the amount of weight in grams most modern cartridges will track somewhere around 2 to 2.5 grams although some of them track a little heavier than that some a little bit lighter and you just rotate that weight and it moves the weight backwards or forwards on that pivot or on that arm to increase or decrease the weight in addition you have the anti-skate adjust and when you turn that little dial there what it's doing is it's a applying a little bit of spring pressure to pull the arm back towards the outside of the record and the reason being is when the record is rotating there's a, a kind of a gyroscopic force that will or or a kind of a centrifugal force I don't know what you would call it I'm sure some of you can help me with that that wants to make the stylus pull in towards the center of the record and as we saw in a pre in the previous video of the Rotel uh, turntable go back and watch that video you'll see about tracking force and the importance of, of anti-skate you'll see how it really really seriously affects the distortion and the channel separation of the of the record and, and how that stylus tracks in that groove so that's where you would make that adjustment now the next thing we're going to talk about and this is going to take the most time of this video is tangency adjustment making sure that you set your tangent points uh, for the way the arm tracks this is a really probably of all the diagrams I've seen this simple diagram is probably the one that best explains why we need this this is on vinyl engine and any of you who are really into turntables please go to vinylengine.com and uh, sign up and become a member there there's a lot of great information about turntables and how to set them up and how they work and all kinds of things uh, lots of information much more than I could ever offer 
here. So looking at this, let's try to make some sense of what this, what this is showing. Remember I showed you earlier in an earlier frame here the pivot point uh, on the back of the, t of the tone arm uh, on the yoke assembly. And if you notice there, when you start at that pivot point and you measure to the spindle and you also measure to the, uh, to the uh, end of the stylus, you have what's called your effective arm length. That's really important because from the pivot to the stylus, that, see that yellow line there, effective length? That's actually showing the length of the, the, the arm that's going to be making an arc. Remember, it's pivoting at that one point, so it's not traveling in a straight line. It's actually traveling in a curved line. And if you look at that kind of pinkish purplish line there that intersects uh, the head shell and, and that yellow line, you'll see right there that you have the arc that's traced by the stylus tip. So as that moves in and out, as the arm moves in and out from the outer part of the record to the inner part, you can see it kind of travels in an arc. And remember, the record groove is one big spiral groove that goes from the outside to the inside. And of course, the outer part of that spiral is bigger diameter than the inner part. And so if you imagine that stylus as being a straight line, there's only going to be two points where that stylus is perfectly tangent to the record groove. And for the entire rest of that arc, it will be slightly off tangency. So the idea is you want to pick those two points and see those two green lines? They're, sh they're showing on this particular setup where those two tangency or null points are. So there's an, always an outer one and an inner one like that. And there are many different methods that people have come up with because depending on how long you set that effective length, and you do that by moving the cartridge either further out on the head shell or for, further in on the head shell, and then by, by angling the head shell. So between the angle of the head shell or the cartridge in the head shell, I should say, between that angle and the length, you know, where you're positioning it for that effective length, that's going to determine those two points. Now, luckily for us, the way that most of the turntables are designed out there, if not all of them, they either have an angled head shell or they have an angled tone arm calling, called an S-shaped tone arm. And those actually will set the angle, the proper angle of the cartridge, and then all you have to do is adjust the length uh, you know, where you put the, the head shell with respect to the cartridge, you know, when you move the cartridge out. The distance that the cartridge is moved out on the head shell is called overhang. And the reason it's called that, if you look at the end of that one arc there, the overhang is the amount of distance that the stylus is protruding beyond the center spindle of the record. See that overhang area? That's the other shorter green line you're looking at. It's really all geometry. And it's very important because at the places that are not null points, you technically will have a little bit of distortion. And we want to minimize that. So we want to pick those two null points to be spread out in such a way that you're never very far away from a null point, so you're never really very far into any type of distortion, if that makes sense. Now there's a couple different ways to adjust the tangency. One is by using a protractor, which is what you see right here. Now this is a fancy protractor that's on a record-shaped disc, <laughs> and these are two preset points, and I'm not going to talk about the different uh, methods, but these are two preset points and all you do is you put the stylus right on the little black dot as you can see there and you line the cartridge and the uh, I'm sorry yeah, you line the cartridge up perfectly with those lines at those two points and that will set your two null points perfectly. Now it's very fussy to do this and you'll find that out because not only do you have to move the cartridge forward and back in the head shell but you may even have to 
twist the cartridge side, to, you know, rotate it in the head shell a little bit to get it lined up depending on what two null points you want to use. So this is a more complicated way, but it also allows you more options of different methods. And the different methods, you know, you can make the null points closer to the spindle, you can make them closer to the outer edge of the record and so forth, you can make them further apart from one another, but your limitation is going to be how much you can move that cartridge in the screw slots of the head shell like that. So you always have to remember that. Now here's a pretty extreme example, but you can see when you're not at one of the null points, you can see that that straight line, you're not really lined up um, with the groove properly. And this is what happens if you don't have the tangency set properly. Now it's always going to be a little bit out when you get way out at the edge of the record or way in inside of the record. And when we're right on the null points, it's perfectly tangent to the record groove. And what you're seeing, what I showed you earlier is an extreme example uh, and, and not a perfect representation, but it gives you an idea of what's happening. So you understand why we do this alignment. Now another way to adjust tangency is using what's called the overhang method. And you can see this turntable allows you to move, to move the head shell over top of the center spindle. Not every record player will, or turntable will allow you to do that. But in this case you can and you can see where we can use the, the gauge that we have on this uh, again on this template uh, to set the overhang. Now the overhang is determined by the manufacturer and a lot of S-shaped tone arms especially like these Pioneers and the Technics and many of the other ones that are copies of those designs will actually say in the instruction manual what to set the overhang to. And the beauty of this is if you set the overhang to that to that uh, dimension, you know, past the center spindle, and you center the screws, you can see how those screws are in a you know straight line parallel to one another. You center the cartridge to the head shell, the rest of the tone arm is already designed that everything's going to fall right into place and you will have the two ideal null points for that particular design of turntable. And that's the easiest way to do it. Now beyond this they make gauges that are just they slip onto the head shell and they actually allow you to measure and set the overhang. They're called overhang gauges. They're just little plastic pieces. If I have a picture, I'll put one up. But if not, it's just a little plastic piece. You can order them online. And unfortunately, you have to buy the particular one for whatever turntable you're using. Like uh, Technics and Pioneer both have two different overhangs. Uh, one of them, I think, is like, I don't know, 15 millimeters versus a 12 millimeter. I'm just making this up, but I think something like that. But anyway, those are that's by far the easiest way to do this if you have the right kind of tone arm and so forth. The only thing that that will not do is it will not allow you to use some other type of null point uh, setting. You know, when we talk about Stevenson and Berenwald and so forth, those are different null points like we were talking about. And if you want to use, if you want to adjust that to a, one of those different methods, you can't use the overhang gauge. You'll have to angle the cartridge inside the head shell and adjust the overhang by trial and error until you get it where you want it. There's also all kinds of protractors that you can download and print out from the internet. There's even a protractor generator program that will actually custom make one of these for your turntable and you can print it out and use it to align it with if you don't want to use an overhang gauge. And uh, all of the, a lot of this stuff can be found again on vinylengine.com, but there's lots of sources out there for protractors. You can also buy pre-made protractors. Uh, some of them look like the one that you've seen in this video. Some of them are just a straight, they look almost like a ruler, but they all do the same thing. They have those two points where you're going to have your two points of tangency that you're going to align. You're, you're better known as your null points. Now here's three charts that are three of the most common alignment 
techniques used for turntables and if you want to stop the video at each one of these and look at it you can but essentially what this is showing you is it's showing you the method of the alignment you know what two null points you're setting for your turntable and the distortion curve for that based on when you're on and off of those tangency points so I'll leave these up here and you can go back and stop the video to read all this if, if you're interested in it okay last thing we're going to talk about in this video is VTA or vertical tracking angle or rake stylus rake angle uh, they all kind of are interchangeable terms but if you see here's your you can see your cantilever and you can see the stylus tip in the cantilever and you can see how depending on where the pivot point is up in the cartridge it's going to actually set that stylus at a certain angle with respect to the uh, contact surface of the record itself and the ideal position for that may not be exactly 90 degrees perpendicular to the record groove. Sometimes you want to have it tilted uh, a little bit forward. You have kind of like a positive angle to it as they call or even a little negative angle to it. The idea is you want to adjust that a little bit and it will make a difference in the sound of the record. Uh, sometimes for instance I had to adjust that a little bit on my PLX 1000 turntable and once I did the mid-range and upper frequencies cl really cleared up quite a bit it was surprising because I never really messed around with it very much uh, I usually stuck you know focused more on the uh, the null points than I did with this but it actually made a difference in the sound of the record so that is adjusted if you have a turntable and here let me show you looking at my PLX 1000 you can see underneath the yoke assembly and the pivot and all of that there's kind of like a ring that ring can be unlocked and rotated and it will raise or lower that whole yoke assembly so it will actually make the whole tone arm higher or lower with respect to the to the base of the turntable and that's going to change that angle of the cantilever and the stylus and so it's very easy on one of these turntables on other turntables your only option is to put a shim in the between the cartridge and the head the head shell and that will adjust that angle as well a little bit it doesn't take very much the tiniest little adjustment can make an actual difference that you can hear so just a few final comments before we wrap up the video today and that is first of all go back I did two or three other videos on some turntables the the Rotel, a Technics, a Hitachi uh, some couple of pioneers go back and look through those videos I go over a few of these things and actually show you how to do these these setups uh, and now hopefully now looking at this terminology you have an understanding of why we do them the last thing I want to comment on is why do we even bother with all of this there's always been the age-old argument of digital versus analog of records versus CDs versus mp3s versus uh, lossless digital audio and all these other things the first thing you need to understand is digital audio when done right is far 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 superior to a vinyl record and please don't take that the wrong way because I still in many instances prefer the sound of vinyl to digital why is that you might ask first of all all these alignments that we do affect the sound and it can drive you crazy if it's not right it won't sound right but having the ability to make these adjustments does change the sound and you can make it sound beautiful if you know what you're doing it's a hobby in and of itself and many people love this hobby and love to do it the other thing you have to remember is when record was was the gold standard out there all of the recordings and all of the mix downs that were done were done in such a way to either null out or to take advantage of all of the imperfections <laughs> that you see in a record think about it 
when when the stylus is at the outside of the record that outer portion of the record is traveling much faster than the inner portion of the record so just in and, in and of itself you can see a difference in how the frequency response could be now of course that's been taken into consideration when the record was designed there's a reason that the record rotates at 33 and a third rpm and even at the inner part of the groove you're still well outside the you know the range of uh, or well within the the human hearing range so it's really not a big deal actually um, the other thing is these records were mixed or the, the recordings were mixed in such a way that they will sound good on vinyl it was done like that on purpose remember they knew when they were recording this in the, in the studio, especially when they were recording it to, to tapes, master tapes and so forth, they knew that most people would be listening to it at that time on a record player. So all of the mix downs, all of the effects, everything they did, even the placement of the track with respect, you know, where you put them on the record, all of those things were taken into consideration when the recording artists actually mixed it down and made your final uh, master copy the die for pressing these records so in a way it's perfect imperfection or perfected imperfection I like to call it and this is the magic of it um, when you hear about digitally remastered records well there's a couple or recordings in general there's a couple different meanings to that. There are some recordings that were just taken from the original master tapes and they were digitized as is so that it's a perfect copy that you can't tell the difference and then those were just used to make another uh, master plate you know a die to press more records and honestly I would argue that that would sound the same as the original you know because it is it's a perfect digital copy where where it starts to get a little shadier is when they digitize the individual tracks of a of a recording tape you know the multi-track tape and then they clean up the sound or they re-equalize re it or they do things to make to make an improvement you know quote unquote I'm saying that you've just changed that recording in my opinion and really listening to it on a vinyl record and going through all this hassle to me isn't worth it so I like to listen to records that were recorded from you know original material and haven't been modified I don't care if they used a digital master to make to make the vinyl record uh, what I do care about is if they modified those from the original analog recordings before they you know made the made the die for the new records that they're pressing the other thing I don't see an advantage in is a vinyl record of a modern digital recording that was recorded digitally mixed digitally all of that I really don't see a, an advantage to listening to that on an analog record uh, because it was intended to be listened as digital media so those are my final comments about this uh, everybody has their own opinions and this is what I really want to hear let's hear what you think of all this uh, some people just don't want to be bothered with all the work that goes into to you know <laughs> making these things work correctly but some people are fascinated by the technology and the nostalgia of it uh, some people like to hear the pops and cracks even in the rumble and all that stuff in a record it reminds you of days gone by that's something you just can't you know you can't replace so anyway comment below what you think I hope this is helpful for some of you who are not familiar with records and, and want to know more and as always I wish you all peace joy happiness and good health in your lives and we'll see you again real soon take care everybody bye bye